talk to you. I think you're an amazing director. The previous, I mean, Contiki is an amazing movie and just your um, lexic lexicon of work is amazing. So I was so excited to watch Amundsen and it was such a beautiful film, so beautifully shot. Um, so congratulations on that to begin with. Thank you very much. I was just reading, um, I was reading your press notes and your director's statement. And I love that you had mentioned when you were telling the story, you wanted to use um, kind of the, like in Amadeus, how it was told by um, his rival, instead of just telling a normal auto, a normal uh, biography of a person. Why did you decide to tell his story this way? I thought it was very effective. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did because in Norway, he's such an icon. Um, and he's like, he's like a hero. And I wanted to make uh, a richer portrait um, uh, that showed all sides of the man. And I felt that it would be interesting to then have somebody that um, uh, didn't like him. <laughs> I mean, his brother loved him, but he was angry with him. Yeah. And then having also uh, Bess, who's in love with him, uh, having discussing who this man is. And, and that, of course, is also a great tool for uh, bringing up the different expeditions that he was on, because there were so many of them and they yeah. were so amazing. And I wanted to do him justice and show and talk about as many of them as possible. So, so it was several reasons for, for doing it that way, but that's, that's the main ones. And I, I also felt it was an interesting challenge to have two people telling the story about the person that then shows up two thirds into the movie and then sort of takes over as a lead. Uh, I, I felt that was an, an interesting way to tell the story. I, I, I just found it so fascinating. Uh, and he is a very interesting man and definitely a, a contro controversial one. Uh, and maybe not so much here in the States we don't realize, but like you said, he is such an icon in Norway. Um, yeah. so I'm sure it was a tremendous task to tell a story. It's probably something I would think you would feel pressure on when you ever, you do have to tell the story of somebody that so many people know about. Do you feel that there was uh, parts of him that maybe were misunderstood that you wanted to explore in your film? Yeah, I mean, I, I just felt that uh, everything in Norway was about uh, what he had done. And, and not why, why he had done it really and who he was. So I'm, I'm interested in human beings and why we are the way we are and why some people don't do that and, and what kind of personality they have and, and what, what kind, what, what's, what's the part of their personality that, that you know, brings them down or, or they have to overcome to, to do what they do. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of stuff. It's interesting to me. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I just thought, I, I love the film. And it was visually, it's, it's done so well. It's so beautifully. Um, and I wonder if you could talk about for a moment, your director of photographer and how you went about, about, about choosing him. Because I mean, I think to, to your credit too, because you have shot since like Pirates of the Caribbean, such a huge film. So you're used to kind of, I'm sure you've had experience shooting like these crazy, Seeds, um, and in this film, kind of, there's like a play. It's there's many visually beautifully scenes that, that uh, seem uh, like attacks to shoot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they are, and uh, and I I love cinema, and I wanted this film to be very cinematic, and also, of course, Roald's life is in two places. He's he's in civilization, and then he's in nature, and and he felt so free and he was drawn to that landscape, which in, in a way can feel very, you know, like a white desert in a way. Um, it is. But, but, but it, it is, uh, but there is beauty there and there is color there. And I, I wanted to show that. And I, I wanted people to, of course, hopefully, uh, be, be also attracted to it, even though it's um, probably the most hostile continent yes. on, on our planet. Um, 
And uh, I'd worked very closely with Paul Ulvik, who's the DOP, and uh, that was amazing. And we, we um, of course, um, made the storyboards and, and, and tried to, to find scope, even though, again, it is very deserted, uh, and find the variation and, and how, to, how to make it feel as big as it is. Because it's, of course, when we're telling the story, it's so short. Uh, so you, you have to visualize it and, and, and hopefully, hopefully it will I, touch people. Yeah. I, I think it's just beautiful. And I love uh, any type of film really can explore nature in a way you did uh, and how different it is, of, of course, from man and civilization, but man and nature, and just the hostilities of day-to-day -day life versus the hostilities of nature, which really does it, it's not concerned with who or what you are at the end of the day, uh, very equally get away. Um, how did you go about casting this film, like such an important role? Yes, uh, so I, I really wanted Paul uh, again to play the main part. He, he played the main part in Contiki as well. Uh, and the reason why uh, it's two things, it's he's, of course, an, an amazing actor. Uh, and it's such a challenging role. So I needed somebody that is, at, you know, that sort of mastering their craft. And the other thing was that because we had worked together, I knew that we had established uh, a, a great deal of trust. And this role required about five hours of makeup every morning. Jeez. So, so he, he, it was such an exhausting part to play also, because of course, then he had a 12 hour day after that and then another two hours to get it off. And so he hardly slept, but we, we could communicate. We knew what we wanted from each other and it, it made it possible basically to, to do, because uh, to, to work with somebody I didn't know, I think, uh, I, I don't know if, if that could work out because it's, yeah, it was very physically challenging as well as mentally. Both Kuntiki and Amundsen, and you, you are telling these stories that are dealing with a man um, facing, I mean, besides stuff in the personal life, like, uh, amazing feats um, with nature. Is there something about that, that like those kind of stories that just draws you that or you're fascinated with? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've always been been drawn to that, even as a boy, you know, I, I loved reading about that kind of adventures and going on adventures. And I think there's probably also without me having thought too much about it, but I feel there's probably a parallel to what I'm doing myself in yeah. the sense that every movie is an expedition and I'm gathering a crew and we're, we're doing something and I'm not comparing myself, but I think there are certain elements that are uh, similar that is maybe part of the reason why I'm draw, drawn to it. And, and of course, they're also visually spectacular. I also love going to the movies and being taken somewhere. And this often on something more dangerous than I would dare to do myself, but this is a way to, <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I love that you said the comparison is so is very accurate. I mean, I, I love it because you are going on an expedition when you make a film. Truly, yeah. like you are creating your crew and everything. Um, I'm excited because um, in Los Angeles, your movie theaters are finally starting to open up, and this is a film like absolutely want to see in the theater. Yeah. Um, because it is so beautiful, um, and I am so excited that the timing is kind of right because I do really want to see this <laughs> large. Yeah. As beautiful it is on my TV. I want to see it in the, the cinema. Oh, um, for here. Really fast before I end, I know you have to do, you've been doing this all night in your time. It's just morning here. But um, I'm just kind of, uh, as a fan of yours, I'm just um, curious too, what are some of your influences and maybe um, films that made you want to create films when you were younger? Yes, uh, many, I would say. Um, uh, I think it's so, it's very many. I, I grew up both with European cinema and American cinema. I love so uh, in in uh, in Europe, I think I think like my my big uh, moment was actually a, a Swedish movie called My Life as a Dog uh, oh. by Lasse Hallström, uh, which I just 
yeah, it just touched me in so many ways. Um, and then I've, I've also enjoyed Bill August's movies very much and, and Ingmar Bergman and, and, and also three years, Lars von Trier now. And then American cinema, of course, with uh, Coppola and, and Spielberg and uh, yeah, so many. Uh, now I would say Paul Thomas Anderson, I think is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, and, uh, but also Jap Japanese like Kurosawa was, uh, and David Lean, and it, it, it's so many. Uh, up through the years, so it's uh, it's hard to to. I know, it, 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 and it and it changes, you know, also. But that's a, that's a few. <laughs> um, I just uh, I appreciate you talking to me so much. I I just think you are very talented, and this was such a beautiful film. Just everything about it, and to watch it, and such an interesting person <laughs> to make a film about. Um, um, I really enjoyed it so much. I can't wait till it's out, and I just thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. My okay, pleasure. Okay. Bye, Esther. Okay.